The Tamman Shed case, otherwise known as the case of the Somerton Man, is the case of an unidentified dead body found on Somerton Beach in Adelaide, Australia at 6.30am on December 1st, 1948. It's unclear whether the man was murdered, committed suicide or died of natural causes. This on top of a number of mysterious clues in the case has made it one of the most lasting mysteries in Australia's history. On the night of November 30th, 1948, at least two groups of passbys saw a man who looked like the man found the following morning sitting on the edge of the beach. He sat in the same place that the Somerton man was found. The witnesses say they did not get a very good look at him, but it was the same man from what they could tell. He sat barely moving when he was seen around 7pm. By 7.30 to 8pm there was no movement. One witness said he had wondered if the man was alive but assumed he was drunk. A man sitting in that very spot was found early the next morning dead. He wore a nice suit, pointing to at least a marginal amount of prosperity. There was an expensive British cigar in his ear not sold in Australia. Another half-smoked cigar of the same brand nestled between his cheek and collar. Also in the man's pockets was a book of matches, a used bus ticket and an unused train ticket to Henley Beach. All of the tags on the man's clothing were removed, making identification difficult. He was not wearing a hat and his shoes were reportedly suspiciously clean. Another very mysterious piece of evidence was found much later in a hidden pocket in the man's pants. This piece of evidence was a scrap of paper cut from a book that said Tam and Shirt. The backside of the piece of paper was blank. After some searching, police were able to find the very book from where the words had been taken. A man had found the book discarded in the back seat of his car, with apparently no explanation as to how it got there. At the back of the book was the following sequence in pencil. Police believed it to be a code but it's yet to be cracked. Also found written in the back of the book was the phone number of a woman who allegedly lived and worked near the place where the Somerton man was found. She was given the name Justin. Justin once had a copy of the book and police tracked it to a man she'd given it to years before. He still had the book and it was not unusual in any way. Police dismissed the woman and the man as possible witnesses and dismissed the book, given that there was no evidence that it had anything to do with the case. Numerous people claim that the Somerton man was missing persons that they knew of. In every case, police were able to ascertain that the man was not the missing man in question. In some instances, missing people showed up at the police station to show that they were not the Somerton man. The autopsy of the Somerton man showed something quite interesting. There was no evidence of the cause of death. The man was 5 foot 11 with green eyes and blondish red hair. He seemed in excellent health. He was athletic, possibly a dancer or a runner but not a labourer as the evidence by the pristine condition of his hands. The doctor who performed the autopsy said that it looked like a particularly dangerous poison that was extremely difficult to identify in an autopsy. He also said that it could have been a natural death, though he did not find the underlying cause. Either way, there was no way of knowing whether the man was suicidal or not, so even if they had found poison in his system, it did not make it a murder. In the end, no cause of death was determined. The Adelaide train station gave a suitcase to the police that the man had left in their coat room the day before he died. The only labels on the clothing were the name T. Keen. A thorough investigation turned up no Keens in the area with a connection to the case. The jacket, however, led straight to America. British cigarettes and an American jacket made this man look more like a murdered James Bond. In addition to intense public interest in Australia during the late 1940s and early 1950s, the Tamminshud case also attracted international attention. South Australian police consulted their counterparts overseas and distributed information about the dead man internationally in an effort to identify him. International circulation of a photograph of the man and details of his fingerprints yielded no positive identification. For example, in the United States, the FBI was unable to match the dead man's fingerprints with prints taken from files of domestic criminals. Scotland Yard was also asked to assist with the case but could not offer any insights. There has been persistent speculation that the dead man was a spy, due to the circumstances and historical context of his death. So that was the Tamminshud case. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.